How you doing folks? Well, um, I'd like to start this video with uh, something of a rant to be honest with you. And it's to do with legislation in Ireland. Basically, um, legislation in Ireland surrounding gas appliances basically means that a, a, a person must be a registered gas installer in order to touch anything um, to do with uh, residential properties, which is fair enough, and um, leisure vehicles, okay, which is what I'm sitting in at the moment, which is a 1987 Volkswagen Transporter Camper. Okay, now, here's where my problem lies, okay? There are people in the country who will service um, uh, gas installations in uh, motorhomes and that as well too, but as soon as you mention that it's a 1987 Volkswagen camper van, the answer is always no. And I've been met with everything, I've met, made several phone calls, I've met with everything from laughter to incredulousness to downright rudeness and um, to be honest with you it's, um, it's a little bit galling, okay? Now, um, where does that leave me? Okay, I now have a Volkswagen camper van which essentially has a 33 year old gas installation which cannot be serviced. Okay, so I either service it myself, which I'm not allowed to do, and it's highly illegal, and there's a hefty fines for it, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, I don't service it at all, which doesn't sit right with me either, or I um, remove the gas installation altogether and don't have gas in the van, which also isn't practical. Okay, none of these are solutions to a problem that I now face. Okay. But what it does leave me with is a um, fridge and a cooker which I uh, can't use safely because of the fact that there's nobody who, uh, there's nobody in the country who will actually service them. Now what I can do is I can remove a fridge and I can take it off for servicing but the problem is is the fact that the legislation states that I can't install that fridge. I can't even remove it. I can't do anything with it. I can't disconnect a gas pipe from the fridge, okay? There's the fridge down there, okay? Now, what I do have is I have a spare fridge, okay, I, um, that, the, the one that's in this van is, um, it's installed on the, uh, it's installed on the, the, the electrical side of things, but it's not installed on the gas side of things, okay, but I have another fridge which uh, I removed from this van, which wasn't working right on gas anyway, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss how to service that, because what I'm going to do is, I'm making a video to show people outside of Ireland, outside of our ridiculous legislation and our, uh, our ridiculous um, complete lack of an acceptable means of complying with the law in this country. Um, I'm going to show you, you good folks over in the likes of the UK, continental Europe, over in the US, um, how to service your gas fridge, specifically if it's uh, t difficult to light or if it's not burning properly, it's not cooling properly, okay? So, um, yeah, let's get into that, okay? So, as I said, spare fridge, and after I've finished servicing it, I'm not going to be installing it, okay? So, um, I basically, I have two fridges, neither of which I can use on gas. I have not finished um, uh, trying to find somebody who actually will install it. But, a ridiculous state of affairs. Now, what I would say to you folks is, A, make sure you comply with the law in your own country, okay? B, Make sure you do it safely, okay, and that you're competent, and if you're not competent and you don't know what you're doing, you cannot figure it out, don't do it, okay? There is too many risks involved. I would say the same thing if I was starting a discussion about doing the brakes, and there you go, perfect example. I can do the brakes on this van, I've been able to do a TDI engine conversion, which involves fuel and involves a, a whole propulsion drivetrain for this engine. I'm an aircraft mechanic, okay, you would think that, that no. Anyway, look, there we go. So that's uh, that's basically that. Now what you need to first do is, obviously you need to remove your fridge in the van. And that's going to start with disconnecting all the electrical supplies and disconnecting the gas supply, okay? So you need to start by removing the gas bottle and closing all the valves first, actually. Then removing the gas bottle. Then um, then only then you can uh, you can start um, disconnecting uh, gas lines. Um, when you're disconnecting the electrical connections, you need to make sure that everything is powered off. You don't have it connected to the mains. And if you do have it connected to the mains when you're working on it, to be honest with you, just walk away because this job is not for you. Um, there is. Um, uh, there are three electrical connections. There's a 12 volt supply from your leisure battery, which is going to be for your igniter circuit for the gas. There's a 12 volt from the alternator or a um, supply that's only on when the engine is running. 
um, and there is a mains connection as well too, okay? So be careful particularly around the mains. Um, 12 volts won't give you a shock, but you can still set things on fire with it. There's still a lot of power there, okay? But um, it is a little bit safer than the, uh, the mains, okay? Mains will kill you if you come in contact with it, so you need to be very, very careful, okay? So, anyway, that, uh, all the connections are on top of the fridge, so what you will be doing is you'll be removing this um, this panel here, okay? So basically, there's a, in this particular instance, this is a leisure drive interior, there's a strip of wood here which is held in place by two screws inside in the grill. You remove that strip of wood, that gives you access to all of the connections on the top of the fridge. And the fridge is actually held in in this instance with screws going into the, going in through the cabinet there, there, and there's another one down the bottom. You remove those screws and the fridge will then pull out. And um, you might be able to, there might be enough give on the electrical side of things just to pull the fridge out slightly so that you, you can kind of uh, get at them without uh, without having to kind of uh, fumble your way in through that small space. And there is also a flue at the back which is um, probably easily removed. Uh, uh, the easiest way to remove that and to install it is to um, take the grill off from the outside of the van. Uh, mine has eight screws, you remove that and you've easy access to the to the flue. Um, and then once you have all of that disconnected, then it's just a case really of pulling the fridge out. So um, let's uh, let's bring you into the garage and have a look at the other um, the other fridge I have lined up for you, which we're going to uh, diagnose and troubleshoot. Okay, so I now have the um, fridge up on a stool in my disaster area of a garage, uh, which looks like a bomb hit it because um, I still haven't tidied up after the engine conversion that I've done on a T25. So uh, you'll have to kind of excuse the mess. Um, I'm excusing it to myself all the time. Um, so uh, yeah, basically, um, this is basically, as far as I know, this is an Electrolux or M123 fridge. Um, but what it is, is, is it's an absorption fridge, okay? So the idea there is that it, um, it doesn't have a compressor, it doesn't uh, have any moving parts in it. What actually happens is um, you have a, a it uses um, a vapor cycle system which relies on boiling uh, ammonia, so far as I'm aware. And uh, as the ammonia boils uh, up inside here, which is where the heater elements are, it um, uh, it carries with it the heat from inside the fridge as well too. And as uh, after it's boiled um, and turns into a gas, as uh, what happens when you do boil uh, boil a liquid, uh, it comes in here through this condenser and it condenses back into a liquid and the process, it, it, it all works its way back down to there into a little reservoir and starts again. So, simple enough explanation, I'm probably miles away from how, how it actually works, but it's not, I don't think it is far off. Anyway, let's not get too bogged down in the science behind it, but that's basically what we're looking at. So in here, in this part here is where there are, tr there are uh, three methods of heating, okay, and they're all insulated, okay. So what you have is you've, um, you have two uh, electrical heating elements, 12 volt and 220 volts, or 230 volts, whatever your flavour is, and um, you have a gas supply down to here. Now the gas supply basically uh, has, it means there's a little burner down here, and um, the gas is actually the most efficient way of running this fridge. Then the 230 volts and the uh, 12 volts is really for just keeping it cool. It doesn't really um, kind of, it's not for, in, intended for getting it cool. So if you're setting off on a, tr a long trip or something along those lines, the best thing to do is to plug the uh, plug the caravan's mains in or camper van's mains in and leave it to cool down for um, a period of time and um, away you go. Uh, it'll be it'll be cool and the 12 volts will keep it cool. So there's a, there's a little uh, flow chart there on the uh, wiring and um, the heater elements work on all that as well too. Um, so uh, it's pretty straightforward but it looks things. Now I know that the, uh, the mains and 12 volt heating elements actually work but I was asked how, um, how to remove the elements so what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at that and see how those elements are removed. So as I said that, that's basically them there okay and you'll see the, um, you have the two heavy, uh, heavy brown wires which come up here to your thermostat and there your, um, they are your uh, uh, 230 volt ones and then the 12 volt ones are the black ones. Okay, so two separate discrete heating elements. Okay, so let's uh, let's what we do is we'll unwrap everything here and we'll start having a look. Okay, so what we really need to do uh, in order to uh, start this whole process, we need to inspect everything. Okay, we need to make sure that there's no um, there's no holes. Um, it's, it really kind of depends on what sort of state your fridge was in up until this point. Like, I mean, was it functioning at all? Was the performance just poor? Was it not lighting or gas? But it was cooling on mains, which is kind of what my issue was. 
and um, you know, go from there. But um, let's see now. The straps are basically they're, they're actually just folded over each other. So you can pull that around to there now because that'll make it life, life a little bit easier. We can take this uh, this cover here off. So we need a uh, Phillips screwdriver to take that off. Screw out, get a little tray to put our uh, fastener in. Okay. So our parts bin is over to my right. There's another screw over here. And what this is doing is this is actually uh, this is accessing the um, the burner um, and the whole gas mechanism. Okay, so so that's that off. And what I'm going to do is, one of the things I didn't do when I got this fridge is I kind of gave it a, a bit of a blowout and just sort of tried to clean everything, but I didn't bench test it or in, in any way, shape or form. So, straight away you can see a lot of rust and kind of corrosion and everything in here. Um, and take off our insulation blanket. Now, as I said, two heating elements. So, there's a... There's number one, there's our uh, mains heating element. It's just stuck down there in a the tube. Literally just pulls out. So in this instance, what I would have to do is I'd have to uh, undo those cable ties and uh, disconnect the wiring. And you just pop that basically out. And then that's, uh, that's how you replace your heating element. Very straightforward, 12 volt is the same. But there's a very simple and straightforward way of testing them and making sure that they're actually uh, the fault that you're having. And that is, that is by using a, a multimeter to check the resistance of them. Now I know mine are actually working, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put the uh, put the multimeter onto the um, connections up here. So, uh, not up there, there. <laughs> okay, so um, as I said to you already, there's our 12 volt, uh, Connections, okay, and um, so that's one side of the element um, where my finger is there, and then that's the other side of the element. So you're you're looking for the wires coming up, which means that you're bypassing the switch. And same situation here. So there's one side, and there's the other side. So let's get our multimeter set up, and we'll have a look and see what uh, what sort of resistance value we're looking for there. Okay, right. So there's an um, El Cheapo piece of shit multimeter set up there, um, which is um, the type of the reason I'm using the kind of cheaper sort of tools like this is because I don't expect the type of person who's going to be doing this job has everything to hand like a, a professional workshop would. Otherwise, I wouldn't be watching this video. Right? So um, that's uh, so that's that's on uh, open line basically. So we're going to touch that, and that'll go to zero essentially, eventually. So anyway, basically that's that's close enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one uh, one probe here, one probe here. So that is gone down to. You're looking at four ohms there, three and a half, four ohms. You can put it at the 200 ohm range, and that'll give us a decimal. Two ohms. Okay, right, so there you go. So there's the, at the 200 ohm range, two ohms is really what we're looking at there. As I said, I don't expect this multimeter is particularly accurate. What we'll do is we'll check it with another multimeter now in a minute. And let's check our mains one as well too. So that is... That's apparently nothing. I hope that doesn't mean my uh, mains... Uh... My mains um, element is gone. I'd be a bit disappointed if that was the case. So you can go down into the screw there, and uh, that'll that'll give you give you your uh, resistance value. So let's let's go to there, okay? Yeah, so you're there. You go. So you need to go to the other range on the multimeter. So you're nearly up at um, 500 ohms on that. One. Uh, obviously, um, you you, uh, you you're talking about about a, I think it's a 70 watt element on 12 volts. Um, and the element on the uh, mains is much uh, more powerful. So if you do, um, if you, you know, your your uh, measurements V equals I over R and all that as well too, and figure out what, uh, you have your resistance, you have your voltage, and you can find out what current it pulls. Um, 
we might actually do that in a minute. So let's say it's 500 ohms at 220 volts. Um, we'll uh, we'll look at that in a minute. Anyway, look, let's uh, let's uh, let's keep going. So at least we know that neither of them are open circuit, and if they're open circuit, basically it's staying like that on one, which is some of them will say OL oh, well, instead of one. Um, that's uh, essentially infinity in this instance. Um, that basically means that your element is burnt out and needs replacing. So you now know how to replace the element. Straightforward enough, as I said. Um, you just disconnect the wires, pull it out, put a new one in, away you go, job's a good one. Um, but uh, yeah, let's do a bit of maths. You know what, that's the easiest thing to do, is just to go onto one of the uh, one of the calculators, okay? So there's uh, ohmslawcalculator.com, perfect. Good job. Right, so voltage, 13 volts. Uh, I put in resistance of 2.5 ohms giving you a current of 5.2 amps and a power is 67.6 watts. Now I did say it was 70 watts and that's probably right. Um, and in this instance basically what you're, what you're seeing there is that 5.2 amps off a, ba a leisure battery is going to kill your leisure battery in jig time. You know, you're only going to get six or seven hours out of it. And in this instance, um, your battery is going to be uh, killed in, um, you know, in, in less than a day and it won't even cool the fridge down. So 230 volts, resistance 500, and calculate. Okay, so we're talking 105.8 watts, so I'd say it's a 100 watt heater, and a power uh, factor of um, half an amp. Not a great deal really, is it? I would have actually expected that that heater was much more powerful than that, but apparently that's enough for doing the job. So anyway, um yeah, so that's that's basically it. So you're pulling half an amp to cool the fridge, um, and uh, 100 watts essentially. And uh, even at that, it's a much more efficient, um, a much more efficient heater. And uh, it will. Uh, but the the thing about these uh, these fridges is the the best way to cool them is through gas. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so. Uh, looking towards the front of the fridge, this is the right, obviously, at the top, and uh, I've, I've actually uh, just put these two wires in here, and I'll show you why in a little while. And this is your gas control valve here, okay? So, um, we also have a thermocouple there for um, letting the uh, for cutting off the gas supply. The flame goes out, and we have our igniter box, because there's an electronic ignition on this, okay? Um, so what happens is, gas comes in, goes through the valve, comes down here, down through this pipe, and goes down into this uh, burner here. Okay, now there's a jet in there. Okay, so we're going to have to take that jet out and we're going to have to clean it. And um, there is a little hole there to let air in as well too. And that is that little uh, place there where my finger is um, is where the flame happens. And this lad here is your thermocouple, which is what you're looking at close by. Now what happens is um, that will um, that uh, when the flame lights. That will get uh, that will start to glow red, and that'll basically keep the um, keep the gas valve open. Okay, um, gas cookers have this same me mechanism as well too. So if the flame goes out, that gets cold, and that is responsible for cutting off the gas supply. Now on the other side, if you just have a look there, you see the ceramic part. That is your spark plug. Okay, now that I believe is what's causing my problem. Okay. Now we need to actually have a look at that and see if we can adjust it out anyway and uh, try and make it work a little bit better because at the moment it's not worth it. It's not worth a feck. It doesn't work and it doesn't uh, work most of the time and it takes ages to light the gas. So uh, what we're going to do first of all is we're going to get our uh, DL uh, J Edgar Hoover over here and we're going to Hoover everything out, clean it all up and um, see if we can um, see if we can clean it all, uh, get it all looking a bit better. Okay, so now that I have um, some of the dust st that came from the insulation and that taken away, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to disassemble this further. So there's a screw here, uh, so um, before I go any further, I'm actually going to get a little bit of the 40 because that screw is looking a little bit corroded. Give it a little squirt. Just ho hopefully help it on its way. So... There we go. Right, so that's coming out now. At least we know that's going to come out. So let's just leave it in place for the moment. I don't want to take it out all the way. What we need to do is we need to take everything else out of here, first of all. So we have to disconnect our thermocouple. I have to disconnect our gas supply. So um, we'll get a suitable size spanner. And God knows what the hell size spanner they are because they're all imperial weird sizes. I actually do have some Whitworth tools, but uh, they're all stowed away and I'm not going looking for them. 
the last time I used the Whitworth tools was on um, kind of restoring the Lister engine. If you want to go back to my videos, if that's the type of thing that uh, ticks your box, as they say. Um, so let's see. You know what, I have a funny feeling it's adjustable size. Let's get to the right spanner and we'll come back to you. Well, how about that, folks? It is 5.8. And it, the other one is adjustable, actually. I was dead right. See that? First time's a charm. Now, oh, there we go. Okay, so that's loose now. So that's going to allow us to take this out and our gas jet will be inside there. So just be careful with the gas jet. Don't uh, don't mistreat it. It's delicate, okay? Um, so that's that. And now we need to try and get the... Uh, Get that other fella in there out. So um, the best thing I think to use there would actually be some description of you'd nearly you'd nearly go along those pliers, wouldn't you? Um, now let's let's take this screw out first of all, all the way, and then we can have a look and see. We'll just be able to bend that around ever so slightly and just uh, see how we're see how we're fixed. I want to have a look and see how um, the adjustment for the uh, igniter works as well too because there has to be some sort of adjustment in it. Now, um, yeah, you know what, we'll be able to get a spanner onto that now quite easily because that's, uh, that's floating and the top part is out of the way. So uh, let's find a suitable size spanner and we will uh, we'll do just that. Okay, so a 12mm spanner works on this side. So uh, that's um, convenient, isn't it? You just don't know what size bloody spanner you're going to be using. So let's let's hold one side with the pliers. Because there's no uh, flats on it for holding it with a stupid spanner. Would have been nice if they must have included them. Like, for God's sake, you'd think they'd have just included a included a couple of flats so you could get a grip of it without damaging anything. There we go. Okay, so that's now loose. All right, so we can we can take our uh, take our thermocouple out, and that basically leaves us uh, free to um, to do whatever I, whatever I choose, <laughs> or something along those lines. Anyway. Right, so there we go. That's not out. That's not out. We'll pop it up there for a second. Put the nut loosely back on there. That's our, that's our gas supply and our thermocoupler down there. And here's our gas burner. Okay. Now we need to clean that up, and we need to have a have a look at that igniter, because uh, it ain't working, folks. So um, what I'm going to do is there's a tiny little fiddly screw there which I'm going to try and take out and um, I'm going to uh, clean that all up with a wire wheel and uh, we need to get that uh, jet out of there as well too so um, that's, uh, I suppose that's our next thing. Let's, uh, let's have a look and see how easily the jet comes out as well too. Okay, so the screw the screw holding in the igniter actually came out handy enough. It was just the one that was uh, there, um, and uh, that basically leaves us with just the um, the uh, gas and um, the gas fitting with the jet inside it. If you look inside through that hole, you can actually see the jet. I'm not entirely sure that even comes out on this particular uh, on this particular model. I don't want to go tearing at it. I'll just try and give it a little pull and see what happens. If it comes out well and good, if it doesn't, it doesn't. Ah, there you go, look. I just gave it a little rattle and that bit there came out, so that's the jet. So that's great, so there, there we go, so now we're in business. So uh, let's uh, let's clean all this part up anyway, that's, uh, that's where the flame actually burns. So, um, wire wheel on the end of a drill should do the job nicely. Okay, that's looking a bit healthier now, isn't it? It's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be, um, just cosmetically. Uh, but um, what I did was I actually, I just blew through there as well too, 
you know, with my mouth. I don't actually have a comp compressed air supply here. And even if I did, again, for the purposes of this exercise, I wouldn't use it because I don't uh, expect that everybody uh, servicing their fridge at home is going to have a compressed air supply. So anyway, that's um, that's that done, right? So we're happy enough there. And um, if this is damaged at all, if this grill here, the, the mesh here is damaged at all, this part here needs to be replaced, okay? Um, in the same way as this, if this is in any way damaged at all, this needs to be replaced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bit of WD-40 and I'm actually going to spray through there anyway, first of all. I'm going to make sure that that's not blocked. Um, Actually, do you know what I have is even better than that, better than WD-40, is a bit of brake cleaner. Um, and uh, we're not going to use any harsh br bristle brushes or anything like that on it. The only thing you would ever use on that is like a nylon brush or something. Because if you damage that, that orifice, um, party's over for this uh, this uh, jet. So, um, yeah, uh, just go easy on it, folks, okay? It's only a little bit of brass. Uh, it'd be the same if you were kind of looking at the, the jets in a carburetor. You have to go easy on them. Um, so, yeah, um, I am going to give this a clean up and uh, we will uh, uh, we'll come back to it. Uh, as I said, squirt a brake cleaner, nylon brush, away we go. Just going to show you lovely folks who are playing along at home. We're going to put the uh, nozzle of the brake cleaner up against there and we're going to go... And you can see a good clean squirt of brake, brake cleaner comes straight out the nozzle, which means it's not blocked. Now if you hold it up to the light, you'll see through it, but it's a real pinhole, it's tiny now. Um, incidentally, there are different size nozzles for different types of um, fluid, or, uh, fluid fuel you're using, um, be it uh, LPG, propane, butane, propane mix, um, and uh, you need to know that and you need to have the right nozzle in. So if you're using a propane butane mix and you have the one in for LPG, the fridge just isn't going to work right. There's every possibility that that might be what's actually wrong with this fridge, but I don't know because there's nothing written on the bloody nozzle, so I can't actually tell you. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, puts me on the back foot a little bit, but I mean, what else can I do? Anyway, look at, uh, that's, um, so we now know that's clean. We know this is clean. We've blown that all out, we've cleaned it up, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start reassembling everything. Um, so, uh, and then what we'll try and do then is we will try and um, adjust the igniter so it's kind of close to the middle of the uh, the, the middle of this uh, this area here because it was off to the side and I think that was the reason why it wasn't actually lighting properly. Um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll come back then. Okay, so just as an aside, if you wanted to, uh, if you were that way inclined, what you could do is this this pipe here goes up to the gas valve. You could actually take the other end of that off and blow through it. Now, uh, I know that's not blocked, it's uh, it, it's fine in that respect. Um, it's not the type of thing that's likely to get blocked, to be honest with you, but um, it might be worth uh, checking out, just especially if the uh, fridge you have is looking a bit crustier than this one. This one is actually not looking too bad on the back of it, to tell you the truth. I'm quite surprised. But... Um, yeah, so uh, just uh, could be worth checking out there. Anyway, um, we will uh, we will start putting uh, putting everything back together here. So let's uh, let's take uh, take our um, uh, gas uh, mantle, I think they're called, uh, and pop that in there. So that just literally sits in that sits sits in like that. So that's that there. Okay, and then we'll thread this home just by hand for the moment. Okay. I'm just uh leave it by leave it just done done up by hand because you're gonna to need to move that anyway in a minute. Um actually you know what I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll actually put that igniter in first because before we do anything else, yeah. Um yeah you know what we will we'll adjust the igniter before we put the gas jet in and all that because it's easier to do while you're standing up in, uh, on the top of the fridge um, especially because there's kind of a long wire on it. So um yeah we'll do that. Okay, so I'll bring you guys up here again, and uh, now, put that, that out of the way for a moment. Alright, so, now if, you're, if your igniter doesn't have a long wire on it, then, you know, there's a whole lot, not a whole lot you can do about that, you know, but, so that should, this should just pop in through this hole here, and then, now, you see, the thing is, what, what, what makes me wonder is there's no adjustment on it as such, you know, I mean, there's not really anything you can do. I mean, aside from going and bending the tip of the igniter and I'm really all that fussed on doing that to tell you the truth. Just have a look now. See, there's there's the way it is there now, right? Literally just off to the side. 
I think that needs to be more over towards the centre of it. So maybe just the slightest little kink on it might just be enough just to kind of get that lined up properly. And that, uh, you know what? Now obviously, if you're going to do that, don't grab onto the ceramic and try and bend here because all you're going to do is you're only, you're only going to end up cracking the ceramic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold here with the pliers and I'm going to bend here with the pliers. Okay, so the only uh, the only part I'm acting on is the uh, is the metal tip, and we're going to give it the slightest little bend. Okay, I'm not talking about swinging out of it. So uh, I'll just get a long lost pliers and we will. Uh, how about it? Okay, so there's a, so there's that part there, and decent pliers down here, and we're going to just literally, it's quite soft metal, I mean it actually didn't take much to bend it, so that's, you can see there's a little bit of a bend in that now, and while we have it out, I'm actually going to give that a little clean as well too, and see how, uh, see how uh, well it works then, and um, just a little bit of emery paper should do there. I just ended up cleaning it up, with, uh, cleaning it up with a little bit of Scotch Brite. So now let's offer it up and see how we're looking. Right, to me now, that's see that's ground. That's just touching the thing now, so that's not going to work either. You need to have a gap, and that gap needs to be right. So um, what we need to do now is we need to kind of twist it up a little bit. Um, so we will again. Grab hold of this and just, as I said, it's the slightest little movement. I mean, it, it really doesn't uh, take much force at all. Maybe a little bit more than that, right? So I have a good hold on this now. And Okay. What do you reckon? Will that be do it? Will that be us? There's a gap, but it, I don't, there's a gap, all right. But I don't think it's enough. So let's just give it a little bit more. Okay, um, I don't know what sort of uh, power is in that igniter, but if that is, if it is strong enough, that is a great gap, and that should actually do the job nicely. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to test it anyway. Um, let's uh, let's get the screw back in here first of all, anyway. And it's a tiny little screw. Uh, if you're not careful, you'll inhale the Jesus thing. So just be careful. Um, fumble, fumble, fumble. Get that in there. This is where the magnet sticks to it, pulls it out of the hole, and I drop it. Magnetic screwdriver, that's obviously what I was referring to. Okay, now. What do you reckon, folks? Do you think that's going to work? So one way to find out, I suppose, uh, and that is to um, uh, connect it up and uh, try it out. Now, that is the reason why, if you... Uh, if you were with me a little while ago and you were paying attention um, down the back, there is two wires connected up here. Now I have a bench power supply which is actually um, it's a modified uh, golf cart battery charger and uh, it puts in nice 12 volts and is ideal for this kind of thing. You could connect up a battery there either, you know, if you had a 12 volt car, batter 12 volt car battery, a couple of jump leads or jubilee clips or, or well, uh, not jubilee clips, uh, what do you call them, um, crocodile clips. Uh, you should be able to jerry-rig something up there anyway. So let's just put all of this in loosely and um, before we put a gas supply on and before we put the um, thermocouple in, I will uh, we'll, we'll test it all out and see how we get on. Okay, so uh, what I've done is I've actually um, cleaned up a couple of places where this uh, this attaches to because obviously there's only one wire going down to this, uh, this igniter and um, so it needs to be grounded somewhere. So it grounds on the uh, frame of the fridge. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that everything is earthed properly. And um, if it's not, you're not going to be able to see a whole lot. Um, as in, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to light. So um, 
anyway, right. So that's uh, so that's in loosely now. Um, so let's get our uh, 12 volt power supply connected up. Okay, so we have our uh, 12 volt power supply connected up. Um, and uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to actually turn this switch on. So the the, the way the fridge works is uh, this is the control for the igniter and uh, this is your control for your gas. So um, we're going to turn that on. Straight away you can hear it ticking. Now you need to be careful you don't touch anything because that's a high voltage ignition. So let's have a quick look and see. Beautiful folks, absolutely beautiful. Now, it's not ticking every time on the camera uh, because it's frame rate, but uh, I can see it is ticking. Uh, there's a nice big flash every single time the tick happens. So, um, I think we're in business here now. All right, so now that's uh, so that's the 12 volt uh, uh, igniter uh, working. So um, let's get the uh, gas supply connected up and see if that works. Okay, so um, I have uh, the gas bottle there, uh, not connected up yet. So let's get uh, let's get a few screws back in here and get uh, get things connected back up. So this, ah, yeah. <laughs> you know, actually, we have to put the thermocouple in first. So let's do that. Take that nut off. And you thought I wasn't making it up as I go along, folks. That's very kind of you, as I most certainly am. Alright, so let's, let's get that nut on there. Okay, let's get finished ham fisting that into position. That's it. Okay, now put that up in there. Right, now, where did that screw go? There it is, there, okay. So now we can put our, put our screw in here. Okay, nip that up. Because if, if, this, if this all works and it, it lights first time, or even second or third time, then we're in business. Now where the hell did the jet go? Feck it anyway. That obviously fell out when I was fumbling around with it. All right, I need to find that. I hope it didn't get damaged. It's alright, you can relax, it was on top of the fridge. <laughs> right, now. So that goes in there. Let's our jet back in. And our gas pipe goes back on. Okay, so try and keep the gas pipe fairly squared up. With the jet, so you can, you can actually bend it ever so slightly. Just It needs to be kind of set, uh, lined up going onto the jet straight. Because... The, the flare on the gas pipe actually goes straight onto the jet. Um, so, if it's, if it's crooked in any way, you might find you just don't have any gas flow or uh, restricted gas flow. So, let's uh, see. Where did I put my adjustable? Uh, ah. Typical enough. There it was, gone. Right. Now the rule basically for tightening these is uh, is is um, finger tight plus flat. Okay, so it's finger tight now. So there's one flat. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of wiggle room there as well too for um, if you need to go a little bit further with it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you guys uh, moved up a little bit uh, so you can you can see right in, and I'm going to turn on the gas supply and we're going to have a listen for leaks. I'm going to spray it with a bit of. Um, uh, we're going to spray it with a bit of soapy water and make sure there is no leaks and then we're going to try and light it. Okay, so uh, I've uh, leak checked everything. Basically what you do is you get a you get a bottle, of, a squirty bottle of soapy water, even something like Windolene or something like that will work. And you just basically you spray all your unions and you uh, you make sure that there's uh, no bubbles forming or anything like that. And if needs be, um, you use a bit of a, a PTFE tape on the threads. We can get into that in more detail later on. PTFE tape is that white Teflon tape the plumbers use, but there's a special version for gas which comes on a yellow roll. And that's the stuff you need to use for this. So anyway, the, the the bottle of unicorn farts is turned on here and um, 
so that's all on and there's no there's no leaks there's no smell of gas everything looks okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to turn our regulator on the front of the on the front of the fridge on okay and we're going to turn this on so as soon as we turn this on i'm hoping if, with a few ticks we should get a ignition Now what we need to do is we need to actually press in the knob and hold it uh, while we're trying to light it, okay? So let's do that now. Let's give it a minute now. By pressing in the knob what you're doing is you're bypassing the, you're bypassing the thermocouple. Come on. Oh, we have ignition, folks. So you just keep holding the uh, keep holding the, the knob in for a couple of seconds, and what'll happen is the uh, the knob or the the thermocouple you'll see will start to glow red. So I'm gonna let off it now. Oh, you see that's not enough. So press it again. There we go. So you need to maybe hold it for, let's say. Uh, 10-15 seconds. There we go. Okay, now my finger is now off the knob. Okay, so that's uh, that's lighting. Right, so let's turn it off now. Is it off? Oh, for God's sake. Okay, right, that's fine. Happy days. Um, right, so what I want to do is I want to leave that to cool down now anyway. Um, so what we've done so far basically is we have checked our two uh, heating elements, the, uh, the 12 volt and 230 volt ones are uh, serviceable by putting a, m a meter across them. So one of them is 500 ohms and the other one's two and a half ohms and uh, that's kind of what you're looking for there. Um, we have cleaned up the uh, gas burner, the jet, um, functional tested everything, leak checked everything by spraying soapy water around it and um, the next thing to do is to clean out the flue. Okay, so the flue is basically this pipe that goes up to here. Now, what we need to do is we need to take that screw out of there and we need to take this part off. Okay, so uh, let's do that. It occurs to me before I even do anything with the flue that um, if I actually start fiddling around with that, what's gonna end up happening is all the stuff that's in the flue is gonna go straight down into the burner. So what I want to do is take this off. So let's turn the gas supply off, first of all. And uh, I'm gonna take that out of the way so we can actually properly clean all that out. Because uh, that, that just wouldn't do, you know. We should have done it while it was off. So let's you know, take, take that screw out. We're only just going to take the one, the one screw out and just move it all off to the side. Just be aware, given the fact that it was lighting, it's going to be hot. So um, now any of the gack that falls out of the, the flue will go straight out onto the ground, which is kind of more like where you want it rather than straight into the uh, burner you're just after cleaning up. Kind of should have thought of that. Anyway. Okay, so there's the little piece I took off, so the, uh, literally one screw, take it out, and um, it pulls off. And that's actually what the uh, the pipe that goes out to the outside of the van um, goes onto. And you'll see in here, you see this little loop? If the uh, camera sorts itself out, this little loop here, grab hold of that. And we have a little uh, doohickey, whatever the hell it is. I think that's actually for cleaning the flue out. So. If you look down there, it is actually clean. So, now what you could do is you could get a bit of scotch bright or something along those lines and just uh, uh, clean it all out properly. To be honest with you, let's leave well enough alone. It's fine, it's clear, there's no soot or anything like that in it, which you definitely don't want to see anyway. Um, so, yeah, um, let me have a think now. So. We can get our burner back on again. We'll put the we'll put the, the little right angle fitment onto the end of the uh, flue, and we will get um, we get our insulation blankets put back on. Now, the final thing to do really after uh, after everything else is done is to turn the fridge upside down and leave it for 24 hours. And um, if you uh, if you do that, uh, what happens is all of the uh, the fluids that have kind of ended up in the wrong place in the fridge, go back to where they should be, and then you turn it back up again, and uh, it'll be much more efficient. You should do that periodically with absorption fridges. Um, so uh, that's kind of the last thing you're gonna do on this. 
So let's just pop that back on now anyway, okay? So that's, that should have cooled down sufficiently there anyway. And ideally, what I want to do now is I want to uh, I want to try and light it again, and I want to see it lighting much more uh, efficiently. Um, and not spending ages ticking away, because obviously the whole object of this game was to stop that from happening. Uh, and for it to light, to light easily. Um, so uh, yeah, anyway, we'll get that screw back in and let's give it a go then. Okay, so uh, that's that back in now. Now, while we're here, uh, there is actually, if you see in here in the back, there's a little window, and the window actually opens in, uh, it opens into the inside of the fridge, and that allows you to see if the flame is actually lighting. Um, so let's let's take it out and give it a clean because you can't see you can't see a bloody thing through that. Um, the screwdriver will actually fit neatly through there, and the fridge will fall on my head as I lean against it, which is not ideal. Let's move you guys over there because all you can see is my hand. Not really the best viewpoint. Right, so that's screw number one out. Again, another fine product from the Fiddly Screw Company. Okay, now that's that. Okay, so they're down in my little uh, tray. And then this comes out here. So there's actually two uh, there's two little screens, but that's pretty uh, piggy looking. So we just give that a little bit of a wipe and um, uh, clean up, and then we should be able to see a bit better as to how the flame is doing in the back of the fridge. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually just reaching my finger in with a rag and just cleaning the window on the inside, the inside of the inside window, if you know what I mean. So because um, obviously. It's kind of hard to get at, and it's the only way you're really going to clean it. Anyway, so that's fine, and uh, then there's our little inspection window here. Look, it's not a pair of glasses, folks, for Jay's sake. Come on, we don't need it to be perfect. It just needs to be clean enough to be able to see through. So, put that there. Okay. So... Yeah, okay, and then there's the little retaining plate that goes on over the top of it, which is this lad here. So, um, two, uh, two screws, pop them back on, and that is supposed to hold the piece of glass in place. But uh, the glass goes right away up into the hole, so uh, you would have thought that it there would have been a sort of a method for holding it on both sides, but clearly there isn't. Anyway, so let's see now. that one in and put the bottom one in now okay right now perfect how about we get that lit lighting again see how it lights this time around hopefully it'll be a little bit easier because there's a bit of gas in the pipe or at least that's the theory anyway so Turn that on, gas is on, igniter's on. Hey, hey. Nothing wrong with that, folks. I'm really happy with that. Excellent. Right, so that's, uh, so that's that. I'm going to turn it off properly this time. And you see the igniter comes on straight away again. And that's what we're looking for. So, brilliant. Right, so next thing we need to do is get the uh, get the, the, the insulation blankets wrapped up, wrapped up around it again. And um, one of the questions people asked me actually on um, on the subject of these, uh, these um, fridges was um, how, they're, how you remove them. Well, see the problem is it's different in different vans. So I can only tell you in a leisure drive, I'll turn off that clicking. I can tell you in a leisure drive that basically, uh, in mine particularly, it's screwed in from the side and there were like three to five screws and there were five screw holes and three screws in mine and, and they just went literally into the side of the fridge which was a bit... I don't think it was like that from the factory maybe there was just a bracket that held it in place they might be held in from the bottom, there might be screws to come up from the bottom um, 
but uh, really it's just a case of feeling your way around and finding out there might be a, a bracket or something somewhere in it um, I don't know but uh, the easiest thing to do is to once you, like if you find a couple of screws and you remove them grab hold of the fridge from the inside and kind of try and lift it gently and just try and pull it towards you and if it's coming out then well and good and you should be able to pull it out just enough to be able to disconnect everything on the top all of the connections are on the top except for the flue which is at the back it's still on the top but it's at the back so um, yeah that's as much as I can do to help you folks to be honest with you sorry and um, the other question that was asked was how to remove the 12 volt and 230 volt heating elements I think I covered that so um, hopefully it was clear enough if it wasn't please do comment and I'll try and clarify it for you and um, so uh, yeah let's uh, let's get back to this okay so uh, reinstalling the um, insulation blanket is literally just a case of just wrapping it around the um, wrapping it around the whole assembly here um, bearing in mind that there is cutouts for the uh, for the, the whole um, uh, heater arrangement um, so uh, have it upside down alright yeah, there we go that's a bit better Installation is the reverse of removal, only you swear in different places. So. Alright, so it's literally just a case of doing up a belt and you just you kind of feed it through the loop. Pull it tight. Okay, so that's that one on. And there's another band for the bottom as well too, so get that on as well too. Okay, and fold it like that. Okay, that's our insulation blanket on. Now we need to put the cover back on for the bottom of the uh, uh, for the for the burner on the bottom. There's two screws for that. You might remember this cover here. That was uh, that's the one we're talking about. It literally just goes up like this. One screw in there. One of the things I didn't do last time I kind of uh, did anything with this fridge when I bought it at first, I kind of gave it a little bit of clean out and whatever, but I didn't um, I didn't do anything by way of kind of uh, function testing it, like I didn't uh, connect up the, um, I didn't have that go, there it is, uh, I didn't do anything like uh, connecting up the gas bottle to it on the, uh, on the, the bench in the workshop or anything like that, uh, so there was no way of really knowing if it was, uh, if it was working or not. So there we go, so there's the, there's the cover back on for the burner. And we have this little lad to go back onto the flue on the top. So uh, let's uh, let's get that done. So literally, that just drops on. You see, there's a corresponding hole in it. Drops on there. Little uh, self-tapping screw in through there, and tighten it up. And we get a screwdriver for there now. There we go. Spare parts, fortunately enough, are still available for this uh, for this type of fridge. Um, you can get the jets for it, you can get the burner assembly, you can get a lot of stuff for it, you can get new heating elements and everything as well too. So um, it's kind of nice that way, you know, and it is an effective fridge. Uh, to be honest with you as well too, one of the things that appalls me is the price of the bloody um, compressor fridges. I mean, it's <laughs> like six and seven hundred quid. I could not justify that kind of money. Um, so. Uh, that's why I went down the route of doing this, and besides, the compressor fridge is limiting insofar as, um, 
you don't have the uh, you can't run it off gas uh, you're you have to run it off the electricity and it has to run off 12 volts now you can get a 200, 230 volt power supply for them if you're on a hookup but that's another 100 quid or something like that uh, to me that's bonkers so um, especially when you can get like a countertop mains fridge and an inverter you probably get that whole setup for 200 quid but the problem is inverters are inherently very lossy and uh, it would not be an efficient fridge um, so uh, anyway, right, uh, let's do one last function test and see if this is actually still working because I've got everything back together again now. So, um, power on. That light is supposed to flash in that switch and actually if you hold it like that, it does sometimes. There you go. I tried fixing it, I just can't get it to stay working. Um, right, so push this in. Thing of beauty, folks. Now, obviously, you have to hold it a little bit longer. Okay, that's 10 seconds. Ah, come on. Don't make it a show me. Okay, so you have to keep holding it for a little while, but at least the bloody thing lights, which it didn't before. So, now, let's have a quick look inside the fridge. And hopefully, you'll be able to see down there, and you can look. There you go, you can just about see the, um, the flame. And that's, uh, that's your inspection window, basically. That's what I was cleaning the inside of there. So, uh, happy days. Right, so that's got a nice clean flame. Ah. Electrolux RM212. I was trying to remember what the model was. I looked at the data plate and everything in here for it. Um, well, there you go now. Okay, let's turn that off. And you can turn off the igniter as well, too. Alright, last thing to do is I am going to put this fridge on, it, uh, on its top. I'm going to stand it upside down. I'm going to leave it... Uh, leave it be for uh, 24 hours. But uh, basically, reinstallation is the reverse of removal. Just remember, folks, Check all of your gas unions, spray them with uh, spray them with uh, soapy water, and just check them, okay? And if they're bubbling at all, you need to try and tighten them a little bit. If they don't, uh, if you don't have any success tightening them, what you then need to do is you need to put a little bit of PTFE tape on the threads, okay? Probably no bad idea anyway, just to have some of that. You can get it in most uh, kind of plumber supply shops. Um, it's a uh, gas pipe, uh, gas pipe PTFE, the yellow stuff. Um, They'll, they should know what you're talking about. Uh, they probably, you know, usual trade counter kind of carry on. They'll probably laugh you out of the place. But anyway, look, I think um, I think I've probably covered everything that needs to be covered. Yeah, look, thanks for watching, and um, I will uh, see you in a future video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.